What began as a quest to find and purchase, no matter its state, my Range Rover that I sold 30 years ago, has led me to this. Sleeping the night, curled on the back seat, to be woken by the Australian bush calls and being reacquainted with the familiar smell of gear oil. This series of videos is that story. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and traveling to the remotest parts of the world. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe and remember to hit that notifications bell to make sure you catch our weekly videos. To recap, eight weeks ago I bought Blind, from the other side of Australia, a 1975 Range Rover. And my first action after buying it was to tell my good friend Paul Marsh, whose reaction says it all. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> you know, this is Andrew's passion. He loves these old Range Rovers. You've probably seen him drive one in the past. Now, to get his hands on one of these, I can see why he's like a boy in a candy store. I really can. <laughs> oh my god, this is the actual vehicle. This is it. It, 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 it belongs to me. It, it's it's mine. mine. You bought it. And I have to say here, I have to say here, this project actually started about a year ago. Sure. And I was sent this. It is still sealed. I went looking for my Range Rover. I remember. Your, your original one. 82. I owned it between 82 and 90. And I actually tracked it down. It had been wrecked, but the original papers and the builder's plate I found. And they are in this envelope and I have not opened it. And I will not open it <laughs> until I actually climb into that one. And then I will open my old Range Rover's build plate and I'll stick it on the dashboard with some plastic <laughs> or something. And I will drive this thing to Perth. Go. So that's where it started. It actually started that long ago. And here we are. Unbelievable. I just, I think about, have I done the right thing? I've just set the path forward by just having an idea and doing something about it. And it's just, oh yeah, pretty exciting. And now with my brother Simon in Melbourne, who first collected it from the cellar and arranged storage. You. I'm filming you. <laughs> I'm starting to think, I'm feeling slightly overwhelmed, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Just a little bit overwhelmed with what I've taken on. Just a tad. Well, it's too late now. I've got to get this to Perth. Before I start it, I want to check the oil. Good, near the top. All right, so uh, I'm going to try and start it. The battery actually looks quite new. If it starts easily, then I won't bother replacing the battery. That's a good indicator, that's nice and green. So I'm guessing that the battery is good. I'm going to start it, see how it goes. Check. 
I can hear the fuel pump. Put in the choke too quickly, I think. I think I put yes. in the choke too quickly, but it smells very rich. It's like adjusting the mixture on an aircraft. <laughs> The truth is, this is a mammoth undertaking. The interior is not in particularly good condition and the vehicle is tatty. Which begs the question, how good is the machinery? I feel quite intimidated, to be honest. At present, the Range Rover is unlicensed, which means I must run it on temporary permits. And these permits are restrictive in how I'm legally allowed to drive it, which means for the first time I drive it, it'll have to be to the designated repair centre. And that will happen tomorrow. I've never done anything like this before. To take such an old vehicle and, and uh, the fact that I bought it blind was, is not is neither here nor there, but the fact that I bought it and the fact that I now have the challenge of getting it right and suitable and I've got to decide what I do with it long term. But you know, I, I thought to myself, you know, this is overwhelming, but if I take this on in bite-sized chunks, just bite-sized chunks, the next bite is next uh, this week, is now um, getting it mechanically good for the drive long drive i think it's going to be quite an epic drive in terms of you know comfort and things like that hasn't got a fifth gear has no air conditioning um i'm going to do something a little bit about the noise because i know these lt95 gearboxes are horrifically noisy um and getting it to to perth and driving it all the way there then i will look at the next phase whatever that is going to be i'm not going to worry about that right now i'm going to worry about that the immediate task confronting me. Cut to the following morning. Feeling a little bit better this morning about the vehicle, seeing it again and my prospects. I didn't sleep last night because I'm actually quite anxious about what I've bitten off, but um, I'm now going to drive it. It's going to take me probably an hour or so to get to the workshop, Rangy Heaven, um, where they're going to, I think what's going to happen is that what I've actually bought is going to be real, revealed to me because we'll put it up on a lift, have a look, and then decide what we're going to have to do to make sure that I get to Perth safely and without, uh, well, let's, let's put it this way, let's lower the risk of breakdown and problems as much as we possibly can, given that it is a 45-year-old car. And given the fact that it was made in the English Midlands, where the catchphrase was, OK, that'll do. A few things that puzzle me. Why are the A and B pillars black? They were not black. So this has been painted. I have to assume this has been painted. Um, inertia reel seat belts. My father's Range Rover was a 74 model and it did not have inertia reels. Was this part of the Australian design rules? Um, could be, could be, but it, it didn't have inertia reels. This one does. Um, and I, I hope this has power steering. My one didn't. My father's did. It makes a massive difference to the drivability of this thing. And this is bringing back some memories. This panel here is loose. The rivets have come undone and I used to I made a video about a, a famous well, famous road a road that I had traveled many many times it was a car breaker this is on my fifth drive on the road early 1987 this is the main Francistown Mound Road we're about 230 kilometers from Mound 
and the Makarikari pans are absolutely swamped and at this point behind us we've just crossed, they've actually crossed the road. The road was so rough that I used to carry pop rivets to replace lost rivets along the way. What I used to do is I would get out at my destination and take a pop rivet gun and replace these rivets. These smooth paved roads are misleading and they will peter out and turn into a rough track. So rough in places that it would shake an ordinary car to pieces. And they would come out on both sides and here I see very very easy to fix, extremely easy to fix, but I see they've come out on this. Now the saloon car contest. I think we're ready to go, so what I want to do is uh, make a note of the mileage. 74118. The wiper and washer control. In the preliminary videos I did, <clears throat> I noticed that the um, trip meter was on 8888. And that was, uh, and I thought maybe it was broken, and it's not broken. And I said it was possible that the little gear had broken in the Odo Speedo. And it had. And I noticed in the paperwork that it was replaced in 2011. This appears to be working. But it would be naive to think that it's just done 74,000 kilometres. 174, 274. One good indicator is the wear and tear on the pedals. Definitely not just 74,000. Look here, here's a clue. April 2011, service reminder at 79,000 kilometres, and this has got 74 on it which tells me that this car has been parked since 2011. Let's go. Choke. Oil pressure gauge doesn't work, <clears throat> but oil pressure light has gone out. The safety belt attaches to the seat, not to the floor. You don't trip it. Three thousand five hundred and forty one kilometers to go. Range Rover is like a greenhouse. The visibility around is incomparable and so good. Which is just as well because the wing mirrors are not just broken but useless. Take a bit of getting used to. Oh dear, that's not good. It's going to happen every second. In 200 meters, turn right onto Alan. All this adds up to incredible road holding. In the rough and on the road, it's just the same to the new Range Rover. I'm going to really concentrate. Really concentrate. The handling is superb. The road holding is designed for the top speed of almost 100 miles an hour. OK, the feel of the vehicle is um, pretty loose. Uh, a bit worried about the gearbox because it jumped out of uh, third gear. Um, acceleration is fine. Um, there's a couple of knocks in the suspension. Uh, it was jerking earlier on but I'm very low on fuel. Um, but I don't think I'm empty because the, the light is flashing which means there is fuel sloshing about. But I've got to get fuel quickly because I have no idea. I'm not going to put a lot of fuel in because we might need to, probably will, drain the fuel tank. Spotted a service station, I can get some petrol. Um, Siri, closest petrol station. Drove me straight past this one. Would have. It's nerve wracking. I 
touch and go. Difficult, get, it's difficult to drive and um, getting used to it. And right, now I need to navigate to a place called Rovercraft. They are the distributors of um, the Brick part, spare parts, consignment. Starting route to Rovercraft. And that's what I got in now. 25 minute drive. Okay. At least I don't have to worry about running out of petrol. Other things to worry about. <laughs> but the indicators are working. I did a check. Sweet. Yeah, the indicators are working, and that whirring sound is a fuel pump. I'll find out more about that later. Um, it's telling me to come out and then make a left, which is good. Okay. Range Rover has the most marvelous driving position for you, but you sit very, very high. You, and it was the uh, it was the start of the imperiousness of Range Rover drivers over everybody else, repaired over everybody else, lorded it over everybody else, and. Um, in 1.1 kilometres, turn right onto Springdale Road towards Glen Waverley. And Land Rover kept that driving position in its Discovery 1 and Discovery 2. And uh, lost it after that a little bit, but it's still fantastic. It gives me a bird's eye view of absolutely everything. Right, let's navigate. Bit of a knock in the steering it's not bad there's just a gonk a little gonk in the steering somewhere and, you know it could be a ball joint it could be a few you know um uh, the motor's the most important thing it's it's sweet it starts quickly it's uh um it's now running without choke which is good the indicators are working the brakes are fine there's nothing wrong with the brakes at all the clutch feels absolutely fine a knock in the back suspension, easy to fix. These are easy to fix, these things. In 1.1 kilometers, turn left onto Highway. Steering is vague as anything. Um, there's a lot of play in the steering. Uh, that can be taken up the steering box. Um, I know how to do that. We can, we can, um, we can do that. Uh, I, I haven't, I'm not going to touch anything else now. No fan or anything like that. See if there's ventilation. Obviously there's no air conditioning. Um, I did a test a while ago um, going down a hill on compression uh, in third gear where I thought it had before jumped out of third gear and it didn't. I was trying to get it to by, you know, pumping the throttle a bit. Um, there's not that much backlash in the in the um, transmission, which I'm quite surprised about. I had bags of backlash, so. Um, I'm getting used to it as well. I, just, I think that's the, the the big thing here was was just becoming familiar, re-familiarizing myself with the feel of this car. Um, it, it, it does feel a little bit like a, driving a garden shed. It's very loose. Um, it's not, you know, it's uh, I mean, this 45 years old. So what did I expect? And, um, parts, put them in the back, and carry on. Oh my heavens. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's it. 
Whereabouts are you located at the moment? So the, the vehicle is being uh, put together at uh, Rangy Heaven in... Yep, St. Cranbourne. Cram, uh, yeah. We can always get this sent there today on the back of a half ton. Can you? Mm -hmm. That would be a... I can see I'm going to have a problem yeah. getting this in the back. Um, yeah, we can get that in, in a half ton. I know Peter really well, so I'm happy to get it down to him. Oh, brilliant. Um, I can have it there organised within three hours. Oh, good. Oh, we're going to be underneath just figuring out what we're going to do for the rest of the day, so so uh, that's fine. Any time today would be brilliant. I think we'll probably only start work tomorrow, but mm -hmm. that's I can do that. It's, um, yeah, well, you get a classic here, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's, <laughs> um, let's do that. I'll, um, I'll book it in now. Okay. Um, we can have it there by, what time is that, 11 o'clock, so probably about 1 or 2 o'clock. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Do that, no, that, oh, definitely. Right, that would me, save um, us a massive amount of effort. Easy. Well, there you go. Gee, guys, thanks, uh, Britpart, Rovercraft, for doing this for me. Fantastic. There's a lot of kit. That would, uh, it would fit in the back, uh, but there would be no room for anything else. So hopefully a good part of that will be fitted to the vehicle, and the remainder uh, that we don't actually fit this week, um, take with me. All right. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just having a look at it. It is rather splendid. I keep thinking, what am I going to do with it? What am I, what am I actually going to do with it? I haven't thought this through. Honestly, I have not thought this through. Let me find it. That's an enormous box of stuff. <laughs> It's just crazy. Ray, Ray, rangy heaven. That's a heaven. It's amazing, actually. It's amazing that I've actually got now this, this, this beautiful original Range Rover um, and this box of bits to get it right. Uh, Turn left onto Berwick left. Highway. And, I, and at the end of it, I'm going to have this rangy that's going to be beautiful. And what am I going to do with that? I don't know what I'm going to do with On the highway doing 90 kilometers an hour. And very, very loud. Uh, I don't know what the engine revs are. There's no rev counter. Uh, probably pretty close to 3,000. It's pretty high revving for a V8. This is not going to be comfortable above 100 at all. It's going to be too loud and too, you know. So I imagine my average speed driving back to Perth is going to be about this, about 90. It'll be a long run. Seats are great though. Range Rover had fantastic seats. I think you're down there. There it is, Rangy Heaven. Hello, buddy. Peter. What's going on? Great to see you. Good to meet you, mate. Yeah. Where's the Rangy? I'm rolling camera, by oh, the way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, mate. Yeah. Oh, it's even here. It's cool, yeah. right? It's actually running okay. Good it's boy. a bit. It's a. It's like a bucket of loose bolts, but it's actually oh, yeah. running okay. Yeah, as good as what you thought? It's what I thought it was. Pretty much what I thought it was. It looks like they've rubbed it down and put clear coat over it to have that sort of... Patina effect. Yeah. You're right, because it's shiny. Yeah. It's not dull. It looks like that's sort of what they've done mm. at some stage. Mm. Oh, you got a permit on it. Beautiful. It's got pretty good tyres on it. All right. But they've been sitting for six years. Six years, okay. Uh, Surprising. Yeah. They're still quite soft. Yeah. Very good. I see too many two doors. What was it? 76, suffix D? It was suffix D. Uh, two, uh, 75 build, um, 70, first registered uh, January 76. There it is, in all its glory. <laughs> so what's the plan? Are you going to fully restore it? Or? You know, I don't know. I haven't really thought this through. 
to be honest with you. No, I, I, it was it was kind of done on a whim. Yep. And, and now I've got it, and I can tell a good story about getting it to the other side of the country. And then I have no idea. All right. Ah, oh, well, that's all right. We've got to get it to Western Australia. Yeah. It's a long way in an old rangy V8. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe and click the notifications bell so you don't miss our weekly videos.